While the whole brain normally participates in communication, most of what we think of as language depends on the left side of our brains. The area for language on the left side is more densely wired and even structured differently than the same area on the right. In 1861, Paul Broca discovered the left hemisphere's role in language. This brain changed the course of neuroscience. It belonged to a stroke patient nicknamed Ta. He was given that name because Ta was all he could say. After Ta died, Paul Broca examined his brain. Because Ta could not speak, Broca concluded the damaged part of the left hemisphere was responsible for language. It's now called Broca's area. Ta's brain was recently rediscovered in a Paris museum. Scientists x-rayed it with a CAT scan. The black area in the left hemisphere is where the damage occurred. We now know that Broca was largely right. Damage to Broca's area does disrupt language. In 1874, the German scientist Karl Wernicke identified a third language area in the left hemisphere. Broca's area in front plays a major role in speech production and grammar. The strip in the middle controls and coordinates movement, but Wernicke's area is involved both in the formation of what is said and in comprehension. When it's damaged, speech seems fluent but doesn't make sense. We now know how we process and repeat words. First, sound travels as nerve impulses to Wernicke's area, where it's analyzed. To Broca's area, where sounds are assembled into sequences. And finally, to the motor cortex, which directs movement and sends signals to the speech muscles. <laughs> 